Hello everybody and welcome to example 2 on page 36 of the workbook. And let's take a minute just to read this example together. So how many elements are in the group S3? List them. And is S3 an abelian group? Okay, so this is a bunch of questions about one specific symmetric group S3. Okay, and let's start with the first question here. It's asking us how many elements are in this group. Now remember what, what we're talking about when we say S3. This is a group of functions, okay? In particular, the group of permutations from the set 1, 2, 3 to itself. Okay, we'd like to count the number of different permutations that there are. Okay, so let's revert for a minute back to the matrix notation, okay, for a permutation. So if you think of what a kind of a generic permutation looks like in this set, we would start with the domain, the set of inputs of 1, 2, and 3. And what we're, what we're asking essentially is what are, what are the total number of possibilities for outputs that we could choose here? So think of this problem of counting the permutations as the number of ways that we could fill in these circles. Okay, I'm going to write that down. So how many ways are there to fill in the circles? And keep in mind that to be a permutation, we need our function that we're building to be both one-to-one -one and onto. Okay, so let's start with the first circle. Okay, so how many choices are there for f of 1? What could 1 map to? Well, it could map to either 1, 2, or 3. So there are three choices, three ways to fill in that circle. Okay, and then we'd move on to the second circle and ask, how many choices are there there? Okay, well, here's the thing. The function that we're building has to be 1 to 1. So whatever choice we made over here, okay, for the output value of 1, we can't choose that same number. Otherwise, our function would not be 1 to 1. So we need to avoid that one number, which means there are only two choices left for f of 2. Okay, and then similarly, to fill in the last circle, we can't choose either of the numbers that we chose in the first two circles. So there's only one choice left for that last circle. Okay, and now... To count the total number of ways, we're going to use what's known as the multiplication principle. You might remember hearing that if you've, if you've taken the class combinatorics. So there are a total of 3 times 2 times 1 ways to fill in all of those circles. Okay, so there are 3 times 2 times 1 equals 6 elements in this group. Okay, because the, the, the number of elements in the group is the same as the number of ways to fill in those circles. Okay, so S3 has six elements. All right, let's, let's see if we can list the elements. It helps to know how many there are. Okay, so obviously we're going to contain the identity permutation. Okay, that's just the permutation that takes every element to itself. Okay, one other permutation would be the one that takes... 1 to 2 and 2 back to 1 again, that's a valid permutation. It fixes the number 3, but moves the 1 and the 2 around. Another possibility is same thing with 1 and 3, or with 2 and 3. Okay, but All three of those are valid permutations, so now we're up to four different permutations. What are some other possibilities? Okay, well... We could talk about a permutation that takes 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 back to 1. That's a possibility. And one last possibility would be taking 1 to 3, 3 to 2, and 2 back to 1. Okay, the fact that we did this calculation, notice that there are six elements, tells us that this is a complete list. Okay, there can't be any more permutations than the ones on the list. You could experiment. And maybe tr experiment trying to write down different cycles, but what you would discover is that everything you come up with is going to be equivalent to something on this list that we have here. Okay, so let's see. We have completed the first two parts of this question. The last question that we'd like to answer is whether or not this is an abelian group. Okay, it turns out that it's not abelian. Okay, and we can, we can illustrate that by just coming up with an example of two permutations that if you compose them 
in different orders, you don't get the same thing. Okay, it turns out one example of something that works is to take the permutation cycle one, two, three, and compose it with cycle one, two. All right, just as a little review, let's do the calculation together in, in this order. Okay, so if we start with the number one, where does it map? Well, one goes to two and two goes to three, so we can see that one goes to three. And then let's see, where does three go? Well, it stays the same here and then maps back to one there. So three goes back to one. Okay, that closes up that cycle. And then the number that's missing is what about two? Well, let's see, two goes to one, one goes back to two. So two ends up starting and ending in itself. Okay, so we could either write that or again, if we've just got one number by itself, usually we omit it. So it's more customary to write that. Okay, so the result of the calculation one, two, three composed with one, two is this permutation. And I'm going to leave it up to you to do this calculation in the reverse order and to confirm that we get something different. If you do it that way, what you should end up with is 2, 3. Okay, and the fact that those two numbers are different confirms that S3 is not abelian. Okay, sorry about my sloppy writing here. Okay. All right, so what can we say in general? Just kind of looking back at this example. Okay, some of these, some of these observations that we made generalize to any symmetric group. Okay, so in general, first thing is, what would the order of an arbitrary symmetric group Sn be? Okay, let's scroll up here and just look at the calculation. So I'm curious if this reminds you of anything. Three times two times one. Do you, do you remember seeing a list of numbers like that in a previous course maybe? Maybe calculus two? That's what's known as a factorial. One times two times three is three factorial. And if we had done the same experiment in Sn, we would have gotten a similar list of numbers. It's just that it would have looked like one times two times three all the way up to n, and that's what we call mathematically n factorial. Okay, So the order of the symmetric group Sn is always going to be n factorial. Okay, And then the second comment is that this calculation that we did up here was no accident. In any symmetric group where n is greater than or equal to 3, you can find examples of permutations where if you compose them in opposite orders, you don't get the same thing. That tells us that Sn is not abelian. For all n greater than or equal to 3. Okay.